Get in your places, everyone. Places and spaces. It's about that time. It's about that time to go to work. Ah. We have a show to create. We have people watching. Can we get a mic check? Yeah. See, Make sure I told you it was time to go to work. Now everybody want to get serious. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Jigger the auxiliary cord. Pull the auxiliary out to video one. What was that? We good? That was Cat. He tripped over one of his oh, pants no. legs. <laughs> <laughs> that was right here. Oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. Like, You got some rubbing? Check, check, check. How we sounding? Okay. No problem. We working on some. Yeah. Y'all doing all right? Yeah. Black Tastic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 I love to hear that. Yeah. That's black and fantastic yeah. mixed together. <laughs> Hey, it, it need to be together. How are you today? I'm fantastically black. Mm. Blacktastically black. Mm. I'm hyperbolically black. Black is here. That's good or bad? Blacktastic. That's good. Is that rain? Yeah, yeah it's raining. Mm -hmm. Bro, I just left Seattle. It rained 24 times while I was there. <laughs> yeah, that's Seattle. I'm so sick of rain. Damn. Almost there. How's that, Kat? Yeah, I was out in Seattle too, man. The rain was crazy, but the people were so, so nice. They're very nice there. That's yeah. what. It's unexpected too. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think you get there, them people so nice. Yeah, yeah, I did. Check, check, check. I performed there. I was like, yeah, y'all. A lot of Bay Area. Uh, and, and Everybody good? Yeah. Everybody in their places? Really? Everybody good? All right, bet. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> Important information today, Clayton. What we got? Man, we got some what very got? special guests in the trap with us today. People be in the comments like, oh, you know who you gotta get to stop to? Yeah, man, so <laughs> I had to reach out and make sure that we got him through the trap. Brother Ben X is in here with us today. <laughs> Tell us who you brought along with you. All right, this is my business partner and brother, Brother Farrakhan Muhammad Ali. Farrakhan Muhammad Ali. How you doing? Welcome to the trap also. Yeah. So what's been going on, man? Give us a brief introduction. You know, introduce yourself to the audience and let them know how we got here. Well, uh, my name is Brother Ben X. Yes. I'm student at the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, my story is I was, I was born in prison. Word. And um, I have actually 21 biological brothers and sisters. But I only know of um, six of them. Four of them I know because my mom would take me to, uh, my mom who got me after 10 days old, um, would take me down there to East Texas to visit them. Um, I always tell that story because the minister said that the way that we was born and shaped in the womb kind of gives us our purpose. So when I think about how I got here as you know, the founder of Digital Real Estate, helping thousands of people make money online and scale their businesses. And now what we're doing, we're here at the farms. I think it started from that experience because I never wanted to go to school 
um, all those times not wanting to get up in the morning just to get a degree or diploma and live that same lifestyle working for somebody else and having a job. Uh, so my mom, she started me off with, uh, you know, going to Sam's Club and buying me Snickers and honey buns and sell at school. So I didn't sell no weed or no crack of them, but I flipped some honey buns, some Snickers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, okay. Yeah, you right was the little candy yeah, man. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you put the candy man lady yeah. in your backpack. Yeah, and yeah. I started a company called uh, DLW Fly Distributors. So I would come to a company like yourself and say, hey man, I pass out your podcast flyers for 10 cents a flyer. I was making about $500 a, month, uh, a week uh, at the age of 14. Uh, then around 2010, because I'm also a basketball player, I'm an All-American basketball player as well. So, Come on, let's go. We were just talking about whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could stay a couple more days. Nah, I don't want to get out there with you, not if you know All-American. So I started off <laughs> editing my videos, and that's kind of how I got introduced into making content. Right. So although I got 21 biological brothers and sisters, um, I grew up in a child by my. Uh, I grew up in a house by myself. Oh, okay. So I would create skits where I'm talking to myself because I'm like, man, I want somebody that I can talk to. So I created videos where I'm sitting right here and this is me sitting right here, and I would talk back and forth uh, to myself. And then I was teaching myself how to edit, you know, my highlights. So instead of waiting on Baldur's life to come come do my my film at the high school, I would do my own videos. My mom would be in the stands filming. I come edit it. If y'all don't want to, you know, get me out there, I get myself out there. So that was my introduction to doing something for myself. Make a long story short, I joined the Nation of Islam in 2015, so I actually had something to offer to our people. So I had a little bit more wisdom to offer, so my videos started to grow because I would do current events and do news, but then I would show how the teachings could have really prevented this situation or help us out of this situation. And people saw me you know, going online, so when I dropped out of college, um, a brother gave me a job and I was working at this school. Uh, but around December, came, you know, the school is out and I'm only getting paid minimum wage, so I didn't go back to that job, so I got a, a job at Sterilite. And that Sterilite, I don't know if y'all know what that is, but Sterilite is where they, you gotta make them buckets, so like what you probably put your clothes in with the plastic, I was making that, so the, the buckets was coming out, I had to put the wheels on the buckets, put in a sticker. Long story short, that was a slavery job for me because I'm living in like, I'm, I'm actually working in a warehouse job, it's in the summertime with no AC. Then I went to FedEx, and this is kind of when I had my epiphany. I'm throwing all these boxes on the truck, and I said, man, what if I come to work next week and I throw 1,000 more boxes on the truck? If I throw 2,000 more boxes on the truck next week, my paycheck going to be the exact same. But if I have my own product and my own service, shoot, the more hard I work or the more smart I work, the more money I get paid. So I started to grow on social media, so now I have over half a billion views on Facebook alone. Um, I, had over, I had uh, my first YouTube channel that got terminated, had over uh, 39 million views. Uh, the second one that just got recently terminated about maybe a couple months ago was back up to over 14 million views. So I pretty much created a blueprint to show people how to impact people, how to grow their father online, and how to really monetize their gift. Because many of what was the violation that they yeah, why, 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 why the person they say was hate speech, uh, but they didn't give me no videos or say why. The second one, they said circumvention of technology, whatever the hell that means, right? I don't know what that means at all. So they literally just terminated the page, no strikes on the channel, no nothing, just deleted it. Of so course, they just I, put some words together yeah, and just, gave you something. He, made up he something. just circumcised technology. <laughs> man, what are you what? talking about? <laughs> yeah, so they just deleted made it. Made up thing, something. Man. And I think it's because, of course, I pushed the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and pushed the minister. I'm well known for you know, spreading the teachings out on social media. Uh, but the way that I got, you know, as the digital real estate founder is people just saw me growing, posting online. And uh, I pretty much put together the blueprint. It's called digital real estate. No, that's yeah. what I was going to ask you. What is digital real estate? So have you heard of in, in, in real estate where you get a fourplex, right? They say get you a fourplex and you rent out three and let those three pay for your mortgage. Y'all probably heard that. Um, well, around that time, people were saying you, you go do this and you go invest and you put all this money up. But I was saying, man, I'm making $1,000 off one video. Y'all probably know that by now. I'm making $1,000 off one video, 8,000 here off this video. So I said, really, I got over 2,000 properties online. Every time I reshare my video on Facebook, if it's impactful, <clears throat> I'm generating more income. So I have a quote uh, that says, don't focus on passive income, focus on passive impact. Because the more people you impact, the more income will come. So I show people how to develop their own digital products, your own digital assets. So, for example, would y'all ever have a housewarming before allowing, uh, would, y'all, would y'all have a housewarming without having couches, TVs, and at least something to eat in the house? 
No. A housewoman is basically, you got this new house. Yeah. Probably not. Well, I ask people, why you asking me to follow you? You ain't got nothing for me to follow. Why are you asking me to follow you, but you ain't got no content on your page? Yeah. So I show people how to build up your content, build up your digital assets, and then monetize it. Uh, because the scriptures say, your gift will make room for you and bring you amongst great men. Many of us is chasing money, but I think we should be chasing the gift. And if we chase the gift, the money will chase us. So I put that in the platform and lay it out yeah. for them. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. No, that's hard. I'm just... Yeah. You got to soak that in. Yeah, man, I mean, social. it's a lot of money on social impact. media. Yeah. It's a lot of money on there if you, if you play it right. Because a lot of people right. want a, a thousand views. Man, I want to get a thousand views. I want to get 10,000 views. But if I tell you stop, switch from getting a thousand views to where you impacting a thousand people. What's a thousand people times five dollars? You can give your nephew five dollars. He gonna cuss you out because I, what I'm gonna give with five dollars? But if I'm giving you five dollars a month and you giving me something impactful, that's five thousand dollars a month you have created from your mind. And then it's a lot of people that say, man, I ain't got nothing to offer. I say, man, you lying. You, you do got something to offer. Even if you've been molested, even if you don't went to prison, even if you done did something wrong, would you rather go to jail or learn from a brother who went to jail? <laughs> Easy. See, would you rather be molested or, or, or be going through a sex trafficking, you know, little circle, whatever the case may be, or learn from a sister and see how did you get in that? That's an e-book. Right. You know, I'm willing to pay you so I ain't got to go through, that, go through that. I'm willing to pay you so I don't have to make these mistakes. So God, when he allows us and permits us to go through certain things, you still valuable even though you think you're not worthy. So I always tell people you are who make, you are what makes you unique. It's only one Carlos. It's only one Clayton. We may be talking about the same thing, but the way you're going to make it funny, the way you're going to put your sauce on it, man, I want to hear your perspective because you done been through something different than I have. So your perspective is going to impact me, and I'm willing to pay $25 because money is a medium of exchange of value. People buying pictures for $500. You mean you ain't got nothing valuable to give the world for $25? Yeah. So I see y'all, y'all got your own platform now. Yeah, you're getting your monetization money, but you're also saying, shoot, give me some little money first before you even get to see the full program, that's digital real estate. Then don't let y'all come out with an affiliate program. They say good dope sell itself, right? So if I got some weed or whatever the case may be, I'm gonna give it to you. And then what you gonna do when you give it to him? You gonna, get him, you gonna give him a little discount. Yeah. You know, you gonna cut him in. Well, what's the difference between you doing that in a digital world? So in a digital world is, with y'all platform, let's say it's $9.99. You can say, hey, all my platform subscribers right now, I'm starting an affiliate program and y'all get 30%. Now how many people promoting the program? Now y'all still getting 70%, but everybody else, they getting their 30%. Now I really walk with 85 South Show because y'all putting money in my pocket. I ain't gotta make the videos, I ain't gotta do the studio, I ain't gotta get the guests, but I get to make money off y'all. Now I really love y'all. Now y'all all over the world with affiliate program, not only y'all making money from the views that y'all got coming in, but everybody below y'all making money too. Mm, 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 mm. You just don't know what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that pretty much does it for me. <laughs> Nothing else I want to talk about. You just Stupid. opened up the floodgate. Why you say that? Because <laughs> now all the people who watch this, even, even the people who don't have a Facebook page, come on, low, come in. You can heard I, what he said. Can I hurt you? 7 and 30. Something. Come on now. I can get you people watching this. <laughs> I be telling everybody. Like, that ain't even what he said, but okay. But I, and I heard what you said about people copying your content. Oh, they, so they, they so love they it. So screen recording it. Now you're giving them a reason not to screen record it. Because if I screen record and give it to you for free, I don't get my 30%. Now you saving all the people who get to see your, your profiles or your program for free and you still getting your 30%. Because why am I going to give it to you for free if I'm going to get 30%? Now you making sure now it's protected. Maybe. 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 Everybody ain't going to want to They still going to steal it. <laughs> they still going to steal it. I think it's just personal. It ain't never personal. You sure? Yeah. They was what if they just back. addicted to it and they can't stop? I got, I got to upload this for them. <laughs> 16,000 people need to see this. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, man. This is the craziest stuff ever. Because we can have, like you said, they can find all the violations for, you know, organic content, but they can't stop the spam and the robots. Yeah. Piracy. Yeah. They blow up my page. I can't even see real comments no more. That's what I hate. 
And they only really, I don't see that on white people's page. I don't know, I don't be on a lot of white people's page, but a lot of times it seems like we got a lot of, if it's digital real estate, they put digital graffiti. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they trying to run the value of our you know what I'm digital what property yeah. down. Yeah. You trying to talk about, you know, it'd be the little freaky girls, or it'd be little, you know, let me show you how to make, man, stop, get off my comments, let the real people speak. Am I cute? Yeah, no. watch my new video. Lady. <laughs> don't check my story. Right. <laughs> Why? They don't do that on other people's page, man. It's the program they got black people set up in. Oh, they got us. They got eyes on a different hard drive. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Ain't no, ain't no, uh, what is the virus protection on that? Right. <laughs> on so, our server. You said this your business partner. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. How did y'all start doing business together? All right, hey, guess what? January the 27th, I will be in Phoenix, Arizona. That's right, buddy, at the Celebrity Theater. It's going down January the 27th in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, yeah. It's 8 o'clock, black people time. Hey, what's up? How you doing? It's your man Carlos Miller. Did you know, did you know that January the 28th, I'll be in San Diego at the Balboa Theater? Did you know that? Because it's true. I will be at the Balboa Theater January the 28th in San Diego. So grab those tickets and come on out. Oh, yeah, we'll be at the Balboa Theater. It's going to go crazy. Um, well, I'll, I'll lead you up until. So he was doing something called the 100 Acre Project, basically uh, striving to get 100 acres and pooling resources with brothers and sisters. And uh, we was getting 27 acres of land, and he needed one more person. So I told him, man, check your DM. And I was the last person. And the way that he uh, explained the concept was, you know, we buy together collectively with unity. So one person ain't got to put $100,000 down on some land or $50,000 on some land. And if we need to get some cows versus one person paying $6,000 or $8,000, we put all the money up together. If we need to get a tractor, which we got our own excavator now, uh, man, if it's $50,000 and we got 100 people, man, everybody put up, you know, spit it, spit it even. And uh, with what I do with digital real estate, I said, man, I think we can we can scale this. And uh, our first goal was to get 500 acres by the end of last year. Um, it's been nine months since we've been in business and thus far we got over 1,600 acres of land. Um, yeah. We got over 1,600 acres of land. We have our own chocolate bars, 200 acres in Ghana. So the chocolate is literally, you can go look at it on our Instagram. So I got our own chocolate bars uh, being made in Ghana. Uh, we have our own micro community, which here going to, that already got 15 living spaces. We have a couple of people that are actually living on the land here shortly. So I just saw what he was doing, man, with the, with the land coming from the blueprint of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, buy land, do something for yourself, self-sustain it, then sell the surplus. And uh, with the digital real estate that I do, I said, man, it's, it's, let's unite versus me trying to do what he's doing and he trying to do what I do. Let's collaborate and take it to the next level. So. You can take it from there. Definitely, yeah, that's exactly what happened. So I came to Atlanta, I was looking for land, and it was so expensive trying to do it by myself. I said, why would I take $150,000? Gotta buy the land, I gotta milk the cow, I gotta farm the land, I gotta, I'm gonna be out there all day sweating, you know, like a slave, trying to do all this, just to provide food, clothing, and shelter for myself. What about my brother, what about my sister? So I said, well, let me make some phone calls. I called my brother, I said, hey, would you like to go half with me on some land? He said, well, how does it work? I said, well, you put up half the money, you own half the land. He's like, all right, great. But the property I wanted to get was still too expensive. So I said, let me call another person. So by the end of the day, I had five people. I said, listen, we pay five ways. We divide up the property five ways. Any money we make, we split five ways. How are you gonna say no to that? As long as you trust the person that's calling you. So they said, yeah, sign me up. So I was like, man, we need one more person. So the next day I put it on Facebook. And when I put it on Facebook, somebody, DM, somebody messaged me and said, well, I have 100 acres if you want it. I said, call me. The next day we talked. They said, I'll sell you 100 acres. I said, listen, I don't need 100 acres. What am I gonna do with that? I said, but I know our people need a community. I know we need to grow our own food. I know we need to teach our own children. I know we need to secure our own neighborhood and raise our families the way we want to raise them. And so they said, all right, well, if you do that, we'll give you the 100 acres. If you're going to use it to build a community for black people. And I said, okay, bet, let's do it. I don't know if they knew 
it was going to take off the way it did. So I put that back on social media, and thousands of people reached back out. Like, within 24 hours, I was overwhelmed with responses. So me being a student on Honorable Miss Lewis Farrakhan, organization is key. That happens to be my background, is organizing. So I said, okay, I need to set up Zoom calls, I need to make a website, we need to talk, we need to go over bylaws. And so first thing people wanted to know was, what was the rules? I said, well, the Honorable Miss Lewis Farrakhan wrote a book called The Restrictive Law of Islam is Our Success. And it's real simple. There's no gambling, no touching on sisters, no stealing, real simple stuff. But sometimes simple things, we get lost in the gray area, we get confused. So I just took it right out the teachings. I said, these are the laws of the community. And then as people ask questions, I had to answer them. You know? and, and then if I didn't have an answer, I would go find it. Because some people say, hey, I don't want to litter, but I want to help. So then I had this other list of people that wanted to offer skills. Oh, I know how to take care of cows. I got old tractor equipment. I got my grandfather left me land. Do y'all want that? I'm like, wow. So we set up all these different groups and calls, and um, we had the 100 acres, but it wasn't suitable for the community that we wanted to build after looking further into it. So we started looking for other property. That's how we found a 27-acre property. My brother Ben X came on. I put it on Instagram. And he said, like you said, check your DM. And we, we talked like the next day or the same day, immediately. And when he heard the numbers, obviously it makes sense. Who's going to say no? But at that time, it was only dozens of people, maybe a couple hundred. And just like he said, he said, bro, we can scale this. This is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us. I said, all right, let's do it, you know? And so that's what we did. And once again, it just, I don't want to say blew up, but expanded very rapidly, extremely fast, faster than I think we may have been expecting. But once again, we're students in Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We spent 10 years working on ourselves, trying to stop lying, trying to stop cheating, trying to stop stealing, trying to stop smoking and drinking and gambling. So we, we are, I'm not going to say we're ready, but we're, we're trained to handle our people. We love our people. So when they come, we handle them with love. We treat them the way we want to be treated. People say, what's their religion? And the religion, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the best religion is to treat people the way you want to be treated, to do unto others as you would have them do unto yourself. Who's going to say no to that? Y'all are looking out for all people, and, and all we got to do is not lie, cheat, and steal. All we got to do is not, you know, blow weed in your face. You know what I'm saying? Just respect our neighbor. Sign me up. It's equitable terms. It's equal ownership. It's a, no, it's a no-brainer. So my brother came on. <laughs> <laughs> you smoking weed over there. <laughs> the guilt. <laughs> you trying to hold it. <laughs> he almost died. <laughs> he almost died. He talking about me. He talking about me. He talking about me. Oh, shit. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. My man, ain't nobody tell me. Ain't nobody tell me. Why ain't say something? <laughs> Oh, and they took my partner out, man. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> nah, nah my you bad. good. So, so that was that was the concept, and uh, so people reached out from all over the world, man, all over the world, primarily Africa, the motherland. People were like, man, I got 100 acres, I got 300 acres, I got olives coming, man. We olives, olives coming from Egypt, bro. We got sea moss coming from Zanzibar. We got cocoa coming from Ghana. Brother, our people are so ready. They just, need, they just need equitable terms. They really just need to be treated right, treated with care and love and a high level of respect. And then once you get the people, you organize them. So me and my, my brother, he's a master at attracting our people. God has blessed him with attractive power, and he's, he's articulate. He's good at it. He enjoys it. The Anvil Muhammad said, whatever you're good at, whatever you enjoy doing is most likely what you were born to do. So he gets are people by the thousands. Me, because I, I have a deep desire for us to go free, for us to live free and independent lives, to love one another and grow the way the Honorable Mr. Louis Fargon taught me. He restored my faith in myself and God and helped me become a better person. I want to scale that. I want to scale being reformed and retrained into a decent human being. So when he gets our people, we, we handle them properly and we organize them. And so from that, we put together a little team, it's only a few of us, you know, handful of people, but with the right minds and, and love in your heart, you can do anything with a few people. So that's how we got to this point. 
Let's go. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. Seems to be a very pure message. So y'all own properties here and Africa, or it's just, yeah? Yeah, we, um, we, so people have given us property. That's, yeah, like, okay. Literally given it to us. That was 100 you said, and then, yeah. That one, uh, we got 20 in Texas, we got uh, five. So sometimes we can do a partnership. So let's say your grandma left you 25 acres. You don't want to sell it, but you don't want to sit in there either. So we got people in Texas that want land. We got people with land that's not doing nothing. So like Uber, we just put them together mm -hmm. and we, part, we form a partnership contract. We don't take ownership. We make an initial investment. We get a certain number of people. We split the profits. So everybody wins. So we got five acres in Dallas we're working on, 20 acres in West Texas, three acres in Florida, um, 43 acres in Arkansas, uh, about seven, 800 acres in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, and then we can get into, we're actually building a community as a blueprint. Like the 100 acre project, <laughs> But this time, with Brother Ben, and it's a little more well-developed, well put together, so we're actually building an entire sustainable community right here in Georgia. Well, that's awesome. awesome man. That's How's it going, though, as far as the process? Great. <laughs> great. It's going Yeah, it's great. just, uh, you know, there's always gonna be ups and downs, man, but what we wanted to do differently was uh, document the process because I'm naturally a, a filmmaker as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know how to document it, put it out there because I know our people all the time when you're giving them money, they skeptical these days. Man, what this nigga finna do with my money? Yeah. Man, he, this thousands of dollars. So with, for, for me, I said, man, I think the best way for us to do this and scale it is to be transparent as possible. Cause we already scared. Oh man, they bombed us down there in Tulsa. Uh, you know, all they, how we gonna do this? Well, people always say, well, what you gonna do when, if, they, if they bomb it? What you gonna do if they bomb you at your house? Yeah. What you gonna do if they come shoot up and put a bomb in, in your house? Nothing, I'm dead, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna die and go in the, go in the grave. <laughs> but I always, the minister said, man, listen, we gonna die anyway. So you might as well die striving to do something for your people, right. striving to be uh, impactful because I believe that's what true eternal life is. It's not my physical body because this is a finite body that's going to go back into the ground. But, you know, they say that if I impregnate a woman or you impregnate a woman, you live on through that child, right? Mm -hmm. But what if I impregnate your mind? And then now you are passing that knowledge and you passing those seeds to other people. Now I'm living on through other people. So the Quran says, speak not of those who are slain in the way of Allah is dead. No, they're not dead. You just comprehend not. So the knowledge that they have given us from the past, all of our great leaders, if we living on that and we are doing something that's effective and sustainable from what they said, they're alive in us. So I'm saying all that to say we want to do something different. And uh, we denied all donations. So a lot of people was like, man, I love this process. Man, I love what y'all doing, let me donate. And we said, no, nah, we don't want no donations. He said, we wanted to do what we could do with our own money first, with our own efforts first, with our own organizing first, then you put fuel to the fire. Because a lot of times, man, we are getting money for ideas. And uh, we want to have meetings about meetings. And I don't like meetings yeah, about meetings about right. another meeting. No, um, me I either, I, I hate that. Just execute. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I wanted y'all to see the execution. So when we traveling, you see the traveling, you see the time. Flights ain't free, obviously. Hotels ain't free, obviously. So we got to pay to do these type of things, man. We got to go look at the land. We got to get the soil tested. So we let everybody know how much we're paying for the members. You know, what's, what's being paid for. Let them know the site map and that's things that's coming. But the main thing that we're doing is documenting the whole process. So we, we went to go clean up the land. Uh, what was that, Friday or Sunday? Mm -hmm. You know, we documented that to let the people know, hey man, we cleaning it up. We uh, documented us up, uprooting the floor, we're gonna put the new floor in. So everything is documented so that y'all can follow the process and see what's going on. So I think um, with that, and we have had uh, a situation with 63 acres, we put it out there, or we allow some people to come see it who wasn't landowners yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so we learned some lessons from that. And um, they lied, they start calling the agent saying, hey man, these ain't good people. You know what I mean? They doing a GoFundMe. We ain't got no GoFundMe, but they doing a GoFundMe to get the land. Don't sell it to them. So do you know that they changed their mind and decided not to sell it to us? Wow. Or they was, you know, doing all kind of things. Mm -hmm. Guy came through uh, right down the street. How many acres was that? 350. 350. Better land, 
uh, great pricing right down the street, and we end up locking that in uh, through Unity as well. So it's been some, you know, hiccups, people trying to stop us here and there. Uh, there's fake here at the farms pages, so our only page is here at the farms. They're already inboxing people from other pages, DMing, DMing them, talking about buy land with me, pay me through cash up, all kind of crazy stuff. But it's been going pretty smooth thus far, man. We got a lot of like-minded individuals, people that are, are real excited to help out because this is something that they've been waiting on, you know, just having a vehicle where I can unite and do something for myself without religious game banging. The minister said we'd be intellectually masturbating. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Man, yo, man, yeah, because we, 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 we go through a debate and we done debated 10 minutes and I, and I feel good that I done proved the brother wrong and I'm in the same condition you in. Right. You Christian, I'm Muslim, or I'm Christian and you Muslim. I'm saying you wrong and you wrong. The minister said, look here, your mother said three plus four equals seven. Yours says six plus one equals seven. Mine says seven plus zero equals seven. And because we got different equations, we argue with each other online to try to see who the best. Mm -hmm. He said, if you get down to the root knowledge, not the branch knowledge, you'll see, hey man, we got different equations, but we all get into the same answer, seven. Yeah. And so we've been able to do is say, hey man, like he said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the best religion is to do unto others as you want done unto yourself. Right. And a Muslim simply means one who submits their will to do the will of God. So if you Hebrew is a light or you whatever the case may be, and you still believe in God, as long as you submitting your will to do the will of God, that's literally what a Muslim is. So we know who you are, you can, but you can call yourself what you want to. Right. What's up, world? It's your boy Chico Bean. And in case you haven't heard, we at the 85 South Show have launched our own independent streaming service called Channel 85. And for our loyal supporters, we're currently offering 20% off for six months. Just use code 85%. That's P E R C E N T E E R 85%. And you'll get 20% off for the first six months. Now, once you sign up, you'll get access to the podcast a whole day earlier than everyone else on YouTube, all of our new live shows, independent specials, new shows like. Like 5 on 85 and even get special offers and discount codes for 85 South Show merchandise and shows. It's only $8.50 a month or $85 for the entire year. And you can find us online at channel85.com or on your iPhone, Apple TV, Amazon, Fire Stick, and Roku. And it's even on Android for all my people with the green text. And remember, use code 85% for 20% off for a whole six months. That's channel 85. Subscribe right now. Bowling. Hey, what's up? It's Carlos Miller. I hope you're having a good day. Try some of these candles from my favorite candle brand, Good Day Scents Candle Company. They are black owned and have lots of different scents to choose from. Use my code L-O-U-S. That's Los. And get 25% off your entire order or offer. Let me see. Oh yeah, we got scents like vanilla, pineapple sage, which is my favorite, Egyptian amber. All types of freaky shit like black love. You gotta go on there and check them out. So when you see these candles, just know that I'm having a good day. You know, these candles have been approved by everybody that we ever presented them to, from Snoop and even Beyonce posted these on the website. This one right here, I think. So go hit the website and grab you some of these candles. Dropping that game, Ben X. Yeah. It's dropping too. You, you that made that sense, Tommy. So when you said intellectual masturbating, it just sounds crazy. <laughs> Stuck right there, bro. <laughs> but it is crazy, and that's what people do all day. Yeah, because you know you feel good, but it's unproductive. Right. 
Right. Yeah, I got that nigga with the, with the, with the, with the, with the collision. He Come on. the quote. Yeah. All right, now what? You going back to the same empty refrigerator I'm going to. Right. Yeah. So if there's no progress, man, you meant to say that's just simple without substance. Mm. Got to make progress. Yeah. And that's what this whole platform right here is about, man. It's all about putting the information out and letting people, you know, yeah. pick and choose Let what me they ask you want. This. How did y'all come up with the name 85%? <laughs> because we knew that it wasn't going to be accepted by everybody. Mm -hmm. We didn't need everybody to watch our show. We know 100%. It's, they can never approve everything. Like, people, we get more dislikes than likes. Yeah. But the people that we talking to, we already excluded the people that we're not talking to. Mm. You know what's funny about that? Yeah. Uh, we had some lessons. And in our lessons in the nation, we had the 5%, the 85%, and the 10%. And the 5% are those who understand the reality of God and mm. know that there's not some spook God and that you are God. You got force and power within you. You have the ability to have a thought in your mind and really bring it into existence. So when we hear this Bible quote where it says, God said, being it is, that's what y'all did. I'm pretty sure this podcast was first just a thought. And, so, and one of y'all, you the host, right? You started this in, in his mind. It was just a thought in his mind. Then he had to will it into existence like the God does. 85% exactly. are those who are dumb, deaf, and blind. Those, these are the ones who are being uh, manipulated by the 10% blood suckers of the poor. So they understand the reality of God and they understand cause and effect, but they gonna give them trickology to get them to, you know, continue to live their savage life. So to hear you say that, we now already understand the majority of people are not gonna understand and you going just to those people, I feel like y'all are doing that work as a five percenter. You know, y'all bringing people on the platform that can give them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, but you know, many, majority of them probably gonna dislike it. But he said that's the work because he said this was the hardest job given to man giving life to the dead. You know, yeah. you ever tried to raise a dead man from the grave? You can't do it. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty, pretty hard. But think about it, we the dead people. When I, if you, if you ever went to a funeral, which I'm sure y'all have, who, who, who dressed the man in the casket? Uh, what's it called? Somebody else did, right? Yeah, Who yeah. put his shoes on? Yeah, somebody else. Yeah, who dressed him, who up his hair and made him look good? Yeah, somebody mortician. Else. So think about us as a people. Who, who growing our own, who growing our food for us? Who right. clothing us? Right. You know, who housing us? Somebody right. else is. So yeah. we are dead people. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he wanted to get life to the dead and make us living people to get up and do something for ourselves instead of depending on white people. The minister said white people is actually no longer the problem. He said it's the fear of white people that's the problem. We scared to go out and do something for ourselves. We scared to go out and build for ourselves because we're afraid that they're going to kill us. Right. We're gonna die anyway. And if we do die, all right, cool. But if I put the idea not in me, cool. we're not cool. I say cool because it's gonna we're, happen. Gonna, we're gonna die anyway. It's got to happen. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah, we're, gonna, we're, gonna we're gonna die cool. anyway. I didn't mean to make it yeah. that right. But if I put the idea out there and millions of people have the same idea, now they don't know what to do because now you got to kill the idea. Mm -hmm. But it's already in millions of minds. Yeah, you can't kill it. It's harder to kill the idea yeah. than it's it is point to say fear. Because one of the first things that comes up when you talk about land, separation, providing our own food, clothing, and shelter is fear. First thing that comes up, how are we going to do it? Well, are we going to be out there by ourselves? How many weapons are we going to have? What are white people going to do? And one thing I noticed is that our people are only like, you know, when, when we're fearful like that, it's a condition. It's not who we actually are. Because after having a brief conversation with them, they start to lose the fear because courage is passed down. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar, he's so courageous and brave. Now you got people like me walking around. I poke my chest out. You know what I'm saying? I don't laugh if it ain't funny. You know what I'm saying? Because Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar teaches us, man, you got nothing to be afraid of. He didn't told Satan everything there is to tell him. He didn't told the devil everything there is to tell him. And he's been unscathed up until now. He's a fearless black man. It's not, it's not many of those walking around here. So he transfers that to us. And now we walking around here like, we're, we're sharing that and projecting that to our people. So when they come to here after farms, they may come slightly afraid, but by the time we done talking to them, they ready to go, they ready to live, they ready to farm, they ready to bring their babies. And when they get out to the land, man, it's unbelievable how our people, all we need, man, is a better environment. That's it. We are amazing people. We're literally the builders of civilization. We are the leaders of the entire world. The black men of America, 
Where is the farm? So it's, it's um, we got 450 acres in Sandersville. And when we got that property under contract, we didn't know that it had a whole micro community inside of it. What you mean? So it had 15 tiny homes in the middle of it. So the seller, they were hunters. They were leasing the land and they had built a little community. So he told them, you got 60 days to get out. I sold the land. <coughs> But they approached us because we had a man on the ground. Once again, using that unity, we had a man on the ground. They approached us through him and said, well, it's cheaper for us to sell it to you guys for hardly nothing than it is for us to break it down and try to take it somewhere. So we bought an entire 15 tiny home community for pennies on the dollar. We got some houses for $500. What? Yeah, they livable. We got man. some for 1500 We documented this, I know. So. Well, our people, we... Toilet is flushing everything. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's hard. <laughs> you see the little tiny holes on all the HGTV? That's all the... Yeah, they going crazy. Electricity, bathrooms, kitchens. We got a brother that moved from Phoenix. He just moved on to the land already. We just closed on the land. He already moved him and his wife and his four children. He in there right now, as we speak, redoing the floor. And he feels good because look what he can show his wife and children. As a man, he got his own home, he got his own land. If he need to feed his babies, he don't have to beg the white man to feed his children and give him poison and GMO and food by zip code like Dr. Westy been saying. He can go out there and put a seed in the ground and teach his babies how to be a man, how to, get, how to grow and, and, and do what God told you to do as a man. So it's the environment, when you change a person's environment, you change their nature. And our people literally just need that new environment and we get a whole new nature. Real. Yeah. Um, I, I ain't gonna say I gotta go to the bathroom. You, no. <laughs> but, but can, so you can, can, can you get them, them books right there? I was just gonna ask you to give me your top five books. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give you some of them right here. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. so this is our gift to you on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and here at the farms. Uh, that's that book right there. It's called How to Eat to Live. Mm, yeah. Um, okay. Show you how to eat, how to fast, how many days you know you eat. Uh, like we eat one meal a day. Um, the Fall of America. A lot of stuff that's going on right now. You can get right directly from that book. Right. This is Our Savior Has Arrived. And then this one, I'm pretty sure y'all may have heard of this and seen out Muhammad Ali and all that with these books. Uh, message to the black man. Thank you, America. brother. So yeah. that's our, our gift to y'all. So those yeah. are my top three. Nah, thank you. Uh, right there. And then another one would be uh, Closing the Gap by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And then outside of the nation, I would say this book called uh, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, because it, 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 here. Yeah, it talks about yeah. you know just how to think and, man, how to really manifest it from our mind and really tap into your, your, your gift that you already have and the riches that you already have from within yourself and just bring it out, you know? That's give, me your, give me your top five books. Top five? Um, I would say uh, we got something as registered Muslims in the Nation of Islam called the Supreme Wisdom. And that right there allows you to develop a mathematical theology. It gets you out of an idea of waiting on a mystery God to provide food, clothing, and shelter for you. But it allows you to tap into the God within and connect him to the creator or the God without and solve your own needs and solve your own problems. So it says, will you sit at home and wait for that mystery God to provide you food? It says emphatically, now we've searched for that mystery God and we have not found one. Therefore, we've concluded that the, the son of man is God. So it, 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 it forces you to get up. It has clear instructions on how to move, how to carry yourself, how to protect yourself, who to listen to, who not to listen to. It breaks down to 85, 10, and the 5. Clearly, where you can say, like Jay-Z said, what percentage are you? The percentage who don't understand is higher than the percentage who do. That's a clear reference to the 85, 10, and 5 and the supreme wisdom lessons given to us by Master Far Muhammad to his servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, at that time in the 1930s. So I would say that book right there is pretty much the foundation for the entire life that I was able to build for myself, starting with less than nothing and being able, by God's grace and permission, to build a life on the Word of God. The supreme wisdom, I would say that's number one, first and foremost. Okay, Ben. <clears throat> Brother Ben X, where can we find you online to get some more knowledge and all of that type of stuff? Uh, Brother Ben X on everything. So that's uh, Instagram, Twitter, podcast, YouTube. 
Um, and if y'all are interested in my program, I'm about to drop it again uh, soon, www.digital4real.com, so digitalforreal.com. And I encourage them to check out all the testimonials. Many people are paying thousands of dollars for these programs and ain't really getting much out of it. So I like to leave with impact so y'all can check out all the testimonials on the page and things of that nature. Other than that, man, uh, Brother Ben X on all platforms. Where can they find you? So I'm uh, Brother Farrakhan, but I've been uh, uh, shadow banned, so you can't (laughs) at me on Instagram. We're going to find you anyway. We're going to get you up out of that, man. Yeah, for sure. I'm at Brother Farrakhan on Instagram, uh, Facebook. I don't have a YouTube. Yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, You got to get that digital real estate up. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. That's a fact. And, uh, and then also, we on Instagram as at he- Hereafter Farms. One, just one word, Hereafter Farms. We got any questions in the room? You keep one. <laughs> what you got? Things like your faith. What's some of the misconceptions people have? They got all types of misconceptions. But Muslim faith. And then can we talk people black with you? Yeah. I think one of the misconceptions about us being Muslims is maybe that we oppress women, you know, because of what they saw in like movies and things of that nature. Um, but in fact, if you go look at, you know, Dr. Sister Ava Muhammad, she's the national spokesperson for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So the women are free in the Nation of Islam. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the home is her base, but not her place. But when you do have children, you know, that is the first, you know, priority. Um, Another thing I think is all we do is sell bean pies in newspapers. (laughs) Yeah, that's why everybody laugh, right? Um, But inside of that newspaper is, is, is news and something that can really save your life. People say, what do the nation offer? Now, you got brothers who are into real estate. I... Is, 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 is proven that I have helped thousands of people make money and start businesses and scale. But the most important thing that we can give you is knowledge. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, wealth, generation of wealth starts with knowledge. If I give you $10,000 right now, $50,000 right now, you'll say, oh man, that's a good brother. But if you got a nigga mind, what you finna go do with it? You finna waste it, because you got no plan, you got no blueprint, you got no strategy, you don't know what to do with it. So I've, I've, I've seen it happen, a brother giving $10,000 and lost it, didn't even know what he did with it, because your subconscious mind is not even ready for that type of money. So again, money is only a byproduct, so what we offer is knowledge, man. When it comes, I'm pretty sure Brother Reza talked about the vaccines on here, right? Well, a lot of the things that people was using and sharing um, to combat that was in the Final Call newspaper. A lot of things about conflict resolution is in that Final Call newspaper. A lot of our people are obese, overweight, don't know how to eat. Every Final Call newspaper that y'all read, if y'all open it up, there's a section called How to Eat to Live, teaching you how to eat to live. And the bean pot got a navy bean in it. A lot of y'all, pretty much all of us, got uh, our cell phones in our hands or buyers. Well, y'all pretty sure y'all know that that cell phone has got radiation that's going out, right? Uh, The Navy bean fights radiation. The minister said that during Savings Day a couple years ago that, you know, the Navy bean helps you fight radiation. So the Navy bean soup and the bean pies, they actually good. It's like an upgraded sweet potato pie. (laughs) But it got ingredients in it that's, that's coming to save you, man. So I think that's a big misconception of the nation that all the brothers do is you know, sell papers and, and, and bean pies, but you'll be surprised some of the brothers who sell papers actually making probably more money than you at your job. I know a brother right now in California got big paper and all he do is sell the final call newspaper and, uh, you know, the bean pie. And then they say something about we out there and they, he got you out there in them suits. Uh, and it's hot outside. You ain't never said nothing about your nephew outside in 90 degree uh, weather playing pot one football. Right. So what's wrong with me having a suit on to come deliver a message to my people that's going to save them? But let me be a sports player going D1. I can have on all kind of pads, face shield, can barely breathe. That's my nephew going to, going to Texas, <laughs> going to Duke. But have he's a black strong. man out there who ain't. It's, it's actually not as hot as you think. When you got the black suit on, uh, it actually stops the, the sun from hitting your skin directly. So we don't be as hot as y'all maybe think we are. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, those are some things that I that I would probably think of and say. One more other thing. Talk about the discipline too. The discipline. A lot of people don't have the discipline. 
Well, I believe that we are disciplined not only because we are given knowledge of self. The minister says knowledge of self leads to love for self, and love for self leads to respect for self. When you get that Bentley, you don't put 87 in no more, do you? Yeah, yeah you, when you got that 1999 Altima that mama passed down, you can let somebody sit on the hood, we sitting on the trunk, but let you finally get that Bentley, you treat it a little different. Well, when you get knowledge of yourself and you realize you're more worthy than the Bentley, you put different gas in your body. You know, you put different food in your body. You put different food in your head. You allow different things to go in. And another thing is is that we have a system to where when I joined the Nation of Islam, I raised my hand and said, this is what I want to do. So now I'm held accountable to what I said I want to do. So it's not one of those religions where I'm going to just choose when I come to work. I don't go to bedside Baptist, or uh, not choose when I go to work, choose when I come to the mosque. We got study group on, you got FOI class on Monday, we got class on Wednesday, we got self-improvement on Friday, and then we got the meeting on Sunday. If I don't show up, ain't no, all right, sister, sister Samantha didn't show up today. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Hey, man, where you at? Why you didn't come? Oh, man, uh, I was doing something. What was you doing? See? Yeah. Because if I say I raise my hand, and I'm, and I'm, gonna be held accountable to this, it shouldn't be nothing wrong with you calling me, so we're military. Right. So when you don't come to class or you don't show up for a certain period of time, you went AWOL. Now you gotta mm-hmm. take processing over again. Right. So, you know, we don't know what happened to your mind. So we gotta, you know, check on you. So a lot of men, man, haven't been put in a position where they gotta be held accountable. You know, you think, oh, cause I'm 18, I got a mustache and I'm grown now. You know, I think that's why a lot of us in the condition that we in, because if I'm the only person that's holding me accountable, all I got to do is have that wicked thought. Oh, you good. Mm. And I'm justifying it. So the minister said devil is deceptive intelligence, rationalizing disobedience. In other words, Mm. I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I'm going to try to justify it real quick. So that thought in your mind is that snake that it's talking about in the garden that's in your mind, that's in your head, that's telling you, hey, man, God just trying to keep you away from the fun. You can go over here and do this. Hey man, don't eat pork. Here, here it come. Shoot, my grandmama lived up, shoot, 90, she ate pork. See, now you starting to justify eating bad. Now you starting to justify doing the wrong thing. So when you are in the military and you actually call when you're doing something wrong, just to call, it ain't like somebody gonna beat you or powder you, but just the fact that somebody is calling you when you wanna live righteously and you striving to be upright, that's why we striving to be upright. Don't think cause just cause you coming to the nation or just cause we got these suits and bow ties on that we perfect. Man, we mess up just like everybody else. The nation is a hospital for sick people. So we there and we striving and we growing just like y'all. So when we say striving to be all right, hey man, I make mistakes just like you make mistakes. But if I'm striving to do right, just getting a phone call from my brother to check in and check me real quick is what get me back on the right path. So I believe that's why, you know, we discipline. You know, in basketball, you know, you do something wrong, the coach gonna check it. You do something wrong, your teammates gonna check it. And our world, man, we just, we just out here, man, and we have nobody checking us, man. Until we die, oh man, I, right. I show he was out there living bad. Oh, she was out there. Doing, you been knowing that, but right. there was no, there was never no checks and balances in there to where you can correct them. They was living free, and in this world, we're taught that this is a uh, Satan's world. So you got the strip club open, them there seven days a week in some places. You know, uh, fentanyl everywhere. You got access to it. So we gotta separate. That's why in here at the farms, we wanna have our own community because we gotta separate. So when you separate, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you never have to condemn a dirty glass. Just put a clean one next to it. Give them another option. I'm gonna add something to that real quick, if you don't mind. When I first joined the Nation of Islam, I said, I'm gonna give this six months. I'm gonna do everything they tell me to do for six months because I wanna make sure this works or doesn't work. I don't want to like halfway it and then not understand what happened. So I, I came up under the discipline the brother's talking about. And within six months, my life had completely transformed, completely transformed. But the interesting thing about it is that where can you go and get trained and develop discipline to take orders from another black man? The Nation of Islam training is so unique because, yeah, it's a military, but everybody in that military is a black man. So we're being engineered to take instructions from black men. 
We're being engineered to be trained by black men. We're being engineered to live in our own nation, to be governed by our own nation. This is a training ground for leaders. This is a training ground for captains and lieutenants. This is the only black military that you can come to in the name of God and be reformed and remade into an upright black man. So that's, that's another thing that I noticed really from a personal perspective was it really allowed me to get into a whole new mindset of interacting with my brothers, accepting the truth from my brother, and, and functioning in a, in a highly organized capacity with other black men, which is something I had never experienced before. And, and another thing is when it comes to the discipline, you ever played sports before? Like, have you ever had an early basketball game or an early football game? And when you had that football game, you was up and you was hyped listening to music before, right? But you notice how when you gotta go to school, it take you a while to get up? Mm. Why is that? So for me, I think another thing that helps us with the discipline, because when it came to basketball, I was disciplined. I'm up, I'm at all the practices, I'm doing my workouts, even after practice, I'm in there still shooting because I see myself in the picture. Mm. I, I had a video that went viral, uh, I always said, the minister said, if I took a picture of this whole room and I showed y'all the phone, who the first person you gonna look for? You. You gonna, yeah, you're going to yeah. look for you. He said, our people are not interested in the education today and what we're offering, talking to other people, because they don't see themselves in the picture. So when you come into the nation, you learn who is the original man. Man, the original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. So I'm learning, man, I'm this powerful? So now I'm, 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 I'm interested in doing better. I'm interested in myself. I have this knowledge of self. Me learning about myself is fun. So now because I like it like I like basketball, I like it like I like college, I see myself in the picture. See, going to the NBA, that's what I saw. So I was doing whatever it took to get there. Now I see myself doing godly things. I see myself doing big things for the community. So that allows me to stay disciplined because if I know, I know if I do something wrong, I'm going to go to jail. I do something wrong, I'm gonna get killed or whatever the case may be. I had this mindset playing basketball. Man, if I don't get my grades right, I ain't gonna be able to play basketball. Man, if I skip school, I'm not gonna be able to play basketball. So I think a lot of us don't have a mission in life. The minister said we walking around, man, without an aim and a purpose. So until you discover what your purpose is and your aim is, it's hard for you to have direction. Imagine you picking up your phone. Have you, have you ever picked up your phone and Siri just started giving you directions? No. Be crazy, right? Yeah. It'll be crazy if I'm driving down the road and I let my window down and I say, hey, Clayton, how do I get to what's the name? What you gonna say? How do I get to, uh, what you gonna call it? Man, you better Google this. Man, yeah. yeah. Well, what is it to Google if I didn't put a destination in? Yeah. So it ain't until you put a destination into your GPS until you get some direction from Siri. Got you. So that's how I look at it, man. A lot of us don't have that destination in it. So now when you see this picture, man, and you see yourself in the picture and you see these great things, I want to build a nation. Man, we got to build hospitals. We got to build businesses. Now I got my destination in, and now I can stay disciplined with my direction. That's real. Yeah. Well, that's dope, man. Yeah. I appreciate you stopping through the trap and blessing us with this good knowledge, man. Nah, appreciate thank you. Yeah. Me, man. Definitely. Well, success to you and keep pushing that digital real estate, man. Yes, sir. Man, and the real, real, real estate. Y'all been NFTs yet? Yeah? Nah. Yeah, I think y'all can... I'm still can trying to get some money in this world. Well, I, well, I think y'all can do something with, with the NFTs as well. You know, y'all can do your own research, but uh, with the NFT, it's a non-fungible token, and it's a, it's a digital asset as well. And the power of it, like, let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, y'all selling um, an NFT and it costs, you know, 500 in Ethereum or something like that. Only those people who have access or bought the actual NFT could get access to the website that offers y'all um, y'all video. But y'all do physical shows. So y'all can say, if you got this particular NFT, then when you buy this NFT, only people that can get into our physical shows, the meet Carlos, yeah. to maybe do such and such and so and so, y'all gotta have this NFT. Then y'all got a higher package. This higher package is for black businesses. So now this is two Ethereum. So that's probably like 8,000, 4,000, whatever it costs. And with this one, you get access to be on the podcast once a quarter or once a year. So why is it powerful? Why won't y'all just do it through a website? Well, with the NFTs, if the more y'all grow and get bigger, the more valuable the NFT is going to be because y'all only got maybe 10 NFTs. So it's like the dollar or any other currency. As it starts to drop in supply, the demand or the price of it goes up, right? So here's the killer part. With NFTs, y'all can have a royalty put on it. 
So let's say I bought the I bought the NFT and yeah. it's four thousand dollars or whatever the case may be, and now it don't went up. Y'all in a bigger space, y'all got more perks or whatever the case may be, y'all audience is bigger, so being on a podcast is more worthy. Now I can flip that same NFT that I got for 4000 maybe now it's worth 10000 But not only do I get paid, y'all get paid too because you can put 10% royalties on there, yeah. 20% royalties yeah. on there. So let's say at one point y'all got this package and now it's $50,000. And y'all may say, man, ain't nobody gonna pay fifty thousand dollars. But the more bigger y'all get, and the more access. Let's say, let's say y'all got some shows, and now this particular NFT, y'all gonna have Kevin Gates there, or whoever y'all like, whoever a big artist is, and everybody who got this NFT is gonna be at the eighty-five uh, percent show, and y'all get to meet our special guests um, in the back. Only the people that got this NFT. Well, I don't already utilize my NFT. I done met, man, this person. I done met this rapper. I'm finna sell mine. But now we're selling for fifty thousand dollars. But remember, y'all got that ten percent or that twenty percent yeah. royalty, so y'all get paid off of all the resales as well. So that's just the power of, you know, NFT. That's what I've right been there. telling him, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I told him <laughs> that, dog. Thank you for for reinforcing. You know, you had you had a few more words that made it sound better. Man, no way. I might have messed up on fungible, so I might have called you. it a fungible. I don't know, <laughs> but you got it. I, I, but that does make sense because every time you sell, you can. Still Still get something like if you I'm just look bought. into it. Yeah. Okay. I look into. I look into it. Come on, Brother, man. Let's see. I was, I was, you talking about tokens? I'm talking about cash. So yeah. that, it is the cash. It's a cash token. In perpetuity. Yeah. Yes, it's, 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 they paying crypto. See. Yeah. I'm on cash. Yeah. What, yeah. what makes you want the cash over the crypto? I'm not, and I'm not saying you should do the crypto over the cash. Just. Is that, hey man, cash ain't never let us down. Yeah. Not one time. Well, cash, you can, you can, you can trade right your crypto into the cash. Nah, man. I've had enough trouble at the regular bank. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, Where first. you can't put your own money out, huh? Exactly. <gasps> exactly. So, yeah, man, I, I don't. Can't even get cash now. Have man. you ever heard of private banking? Yeah, I heard of it. What'd you know about it? It's private. Yeah. So uh inside I just look your, like this. Yeah, so inside of your life insurance policy, <laughs> um, you may know, uh, with the right policy setup, you can actually borrow from yourself. Tell them. From your own bank. I know. Yeah. So you can borrow money from your own from your own bank and you ain't gotta worry about them not giving you ten thousand dollars when you go to the bank and you withdraw it cash free. I mean tax free. Yeah. And it still grows at four to eight percent as if you never put it out. Yeah, it does. You know, that's one of the interesting things we're here after farms is because a lot of this you already know. A lot of this stuff our people don't know. So one key part here after farms is people say, um, well, how can I be a part? And we like, and they think it's just land. Like, oh, how can I buy an acre? And we're like, actually, we have classes. So we have something called Here After Academy. Here After Academy teaches you some basic life skills. One is a farming class. Every night of the week, we have a different class. We also partner with other people, so we have a trust that people can get educated on. They can learn about trust and irrevocable versus revocable and private and land trust, and they can even purchase that through somebody that we work with. But we have these classes every night, so one night we'll have a farming class. One night we'll show you how to take the seeds that we send you, so every member here at the farms also gets seeds. So we send every member seeds because we don't just want people to buy land and live in the community. Not everybody's going to move to Georgia. Not everybody's going to buy land. Even if you are, that doesn't mean you know how to farm. So we want everybody to be on the same page mentally, not just be in the same physical space. So my brother, he's sharing all his knowledge because the more people know this, no man can rise higher than the people around him. The minister said that. It's impossible. So we all have to uplift one another, right? So through educating our people, we show people how to grow these seeds. We send them curated seeds. And then we have classes on Zoom with our farmers called Seed to Harvest, where people learn how to grow these plants in their house or in their backyard. We also have a homeopathy course where a, a woman teaches you how to be a doctor at home, how to, how to heal yourself, how to take care of yourself and your family. What if there's an emergency? Plus, everybody don't trust the hospital. I know my mom didn't. So people need to know how to take care of themselves at home. With a tiny little home garden, you can literally grow medicine right there in your home 
and you can break it down and treat it and put it on your children as needed right there at home. You just need to know how. That's it. We have another brother teaching disaster preparedness and, sur- and uh, disaster prep and survival training. What do he be talking about? So he teaches you how to do the walkie-talkie. He teaches you how to like read. What? Like um, how to how to program the walkie-talkie, how to keep them in a certain place for you for you and your family. I'm not the instructor, so don't ask me too many more. No, I thought you took it. I thought you took it. <laughs> so he teaches you how to program the walkie-talkie, how to put it in position, how to have a go bag, what to put in that bag, how to reorientate your mind to be ready for things that come up. Because a lot of us function, and we know life is going to go a certain way, and we function well within a system that was designed for us. But once you try to break out of that system, sometimes things come up that's un. Unexpected. So he trains you mentally on how to prepare for those unexpected things. Also, physically, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that it's a mental component to every physical thing you see. So he first co- comes into mind, and then he shows you where to go and buy. We don't sell the stuff. We ain't got Amazon links and nothing like that. We just tell the people what they need to take care of themselves and their families. And... Um, and we also have a sister that teaches food prep. She tells you how to take food and can it, which is major. Food storage is major. It's a famine coming. There's a food shortage coming. I mean, you can take it or leave it. It's going to be difficult to find good, healthy food for you and your family in the very near future. This sister's teaching people how to can at home and how to store food, how to prep food, how to use food, and how to save food, and even how to reuse food. It goes through the whole cycle. Yeah. What you mean reuse? So you can you like can like leftovers. My like, mom mastered that. <laughs> don't tell me. Don't tell me. My mom gonna be like, she ain't come up with it. That was me. <laughs> no, I'm just waiting. I'm we just need waiting. to get her on the class. <laughs> zoom. Leftover zoom. Let's we'll forget it up first. Right. 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 Cheese milk on top. Yeah. <laughs> For real. I don't talk too much about food, man. You know? Nah, that's crazy, bro. Nah, man. We just messing around, but we appreciate y'all coming <laughs> through and kicking. You got some, you doing something in the metaverse? Yeah, I'm building a world on You ain't even tell me about the metaverse. Is he supposed to talk about it? You just, no. Yeah. Well, Cause so. you looked at her like she did, she do something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but what, I, what, what, I, what I'm doing in the metaverse, man, a lot of people, when you put them, y'all ever had the Oculus on? Y'all ever had Yeah, I got, I got one, man. I got one. I'm scared of it. Man, it's, 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 it's like a really a whole world, man. And I'm really, I really, really can see that a lot of people are going to migrate there. It's a whole new way to interact. You know what I mean? So like literally if I got the goggles on and you in a whole nother state, I can look like this and this is you. And then we talking back and forth. We can pull up a computer screen and work together in the workroom. Uh, but what I'm doing, I'm building a whole world on there where people will be able to literally come into my own museum, my own artwork, uh, um, art museum, my own school right there in the metaverse. So you'll be able to come into class, sit in the desk, and literally see me teaching in class. Um, and I'm going to be selling digital real estate in there. It's going to get to a point to where I got so many people in there where people are going to rent out a room. So like the same, I, I believe that digital real estate is going to be just as valuable as the physical real estate. So in physical real estate, is valuable because it's limited, you know, 57,255,000 square miles of land. However, with the metaverse, it's like so many people are going there. The same way I will pay y'all to do an ad on y'all show because y'all got so many people there. I'm going to literally have buildings where you can go into the studio, you can go upstairs, you can do a podcast room, and it's going to be built out. So when you see it and you put the goggles on, you're going to feel like you're really walking through a whole entire world. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, with the metaverse, man, it's gonna be a whole world where people will be able to put businesses in there. And as they integrate the NFTs, I'll literally be able to have a mall in there where a mall can be built out. And we got different storefronts where y'all may have the 85 South Show in there, an mm-hmm. NFT that's literally in there that they can buy and actually you. Yeah, because they're gonna have to wear some t shirts when they're in there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. y'all can sell those shirts as NFTs and Give me a comment, put them out of avatars on there. There you go. Yeah. That's hard. Man, I'm about to go ahead and put my man. You heard song. too much about it, man. I told him about that too. <laughs> go ahead and put my <laughs> this song, man. Nah, man. I'm gonna check out this this literature, how to eat to live, and all of that. Yeah. Anything else you want to hit them with before we out of here? No, nah, man, that's it, man. Uh, I appreciate y'all uh, for having us on the platform. Uh, I, my my, my eye has been yeah. blowing y'all up, tagging y'all. <laughs> yeah, they have. Uh, yeah. I believe you told them to do it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 Man, tag them, man. I man, man, what I got to do to get on the 85 South show? <laughs> <laughs> Who you got to know? <laughs> hey, being it is, man, I have yeah, to talk, yeah. man. But uh, no, nah, man, I don't, I don't got nothing, man. I am about to drop the digital real estate program again. 
um, just to show people how to scale online. So again, digitalforreal.com. Um, they'll really learn step by step how I did it, how I grew all my platforms, all the ones that got deleted, um, et cetera. And then, you know, of course, follow, you know, at here at the farms and then just stay, stay tuned for the world that I'm about to build. It's gonna be pretty dope. So we just, we building a world physically, but for those who can't get out the house, we building a world up there in the metaverse as well, because I know y'all gonna be on it. Yeah, yeah man. Well, there you have it, folks. Step your metaverse world up, and we out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Y'all like the evil y'all. version of each other. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to do the face off. They gonna play us in the movie. <laughs> Hold up, we should walk off. Right. <laughs> you stupid. You yeah, stupid. when the money comes, we'll be like this.